This week on Nation's Business, we will take an in-depth look into why drowning is a leading cause of accidental deaths amongst children and even adults in Fiji. Tragically, for country renowned as a tropical island paradise, Fiji has one of the highest drowning rates in the world. The country of Australia has a drowning toll um, about four and a half times better per capita than Fiji's was. And last year, we did really badly. Uh, we're eight times the drowning toll in Australia. Over the last 10 year period, since 2002, 478 lives have been lost due to drowning. The total recorded drowning fatalities over the 2002 to 2006 period is 237. The total recorded drowning fatalities over the 2007 to 2011 period is 241. These deaths have occurred in areas such as rivers, beaches, pools, creeks and household danger zones such as baths, buckets, which are recorded, most cases are in rivers near villages. Tokan <laughs> And so it's about uh, assessment of risk and I think uh, the stats will tell you that a lot of the drownings occur in fresh water, not so much salt water as people might think. And those can have dangers that are just so hard to, to qualify, to, sorry, to quantify. Um, floodwaters going under a culvert. Once you get stuck in there, you know, who, if there's no one to help you, how do you get out, eh? Whereas on a beach, it's sort of, it's more of a one-dimensional thing. You can assess the risks in one glance. Males around the world generally make up 80% of fatal drowning. The case is the same in Fiji. Males contributed to 79% of all fatal drowning incidents. There are major contributing factors to drowning. Weak or no supervision. Children drown quickly and silently in a matter of seconds. Adults who were present when a child drowns were often distracted in some way. Washing the clothes, cooking, drinking grog with friends, gone to the neighbors, or talking on the phone. Medavikitusaka, Kilatulomani Korea, and Gay Manalini Koro, 
Lagi mai bibu kena bawa rara, lagi rara ini bangko betinu ayam manu. Kita non roh sulu langgan esat tangga tip dalem. Em betinu ayi. Weak or no first aid CPR skills. Drowning victims who are rescued need CPR immediately. It will be the difference between life and death. In Fiji, CPR classes are offered regularly by organizations such as the Fiji Red Cross and St. John's Ambulance. Can't swim. Not using life jackets in boats. During natural disasters, warnings are sent out to keep children indoors and for people to keep away from flooded rivers, streams or drains. Yet, it is a common sight during and after natural disasters to see children and people jumping off bridges, swimming in swollen rivers and flooded areas. People are not listening. Children are left unsupervised. There is a lack of awareness about drowning and parental care for children. The only strange thing I see is that uh, we stay in a very uh, cyclone prone area. Every now and then there are floods and you'll see people in the flood waters. Uh, while children should be in a very safe place, but we always think that we are very, uh, we know that how to swim and we are safe. Mm -hmm. But uh, nature can be cruel, mm -hmm. therefore I always encourage people that it is important uh, to get away for, from flood, from uh, very fast flowing uh, creeks and rivers, mm -hmm. and avoid that and be safe. But at the same time, uh, don't just sit back, if you have an opportunity, uh, get into groups and have someone to survive and take the chance of learning how to swim and swim swiftly so that you can save your life. It's a good exercise for you. You remain healthy and you can save others. The question remains, what are we going to do about this blatant loss of lives on a monthly basis? And how can we work together as a community to mitigate and stop drowning altogether? We are ready to get a tumbu tumbu Lebu mandang mandang orang apa tanah mata buat vali, lebu mandang orang apa terna lubi anda, minta babuli, minta babuli tapi terna lubi anda go. Iko pelik silu ayoh ayoh mukila. Kena balik balik ke kila nanggalong one. Tu mandang nanggalong one mula indah betunga sarap terna lubi em. Kuda sakila ngaku kila nanggalong selebu nanggalala. Iko tu mai talono wakasang kata batalku. Aku no muri rauti, aku no muri rauti. Kau kau kata apa nak kau kau kata wakasang kati ko. Doa wah mebutang ko. Kanda dia kan diubiti rau rau ngai wayo ayah ucuk ibal. Siang apa kan dua? Sapa buli di tengok nunggu bule. Kau bina kata kita merang rau ngai dan itu butu berkerun dan dua pada kiau. Menda apa buli dah muri anang wan yang nampun erat toskin. Erat ni balai lete kita kan apa dah lakani luhu. Erat ni balai lete kita kan apa dah lakani kudu nada apa tali ada mai kita kan apa muntak menda muri nalu benda. adult supervision, the inability to swim, risky behavior, and poor decisions add to the death toll from drowning in waterways around Fiji. Most of these deaths are predictable and preventable. Being aware of the risks and making safe choices are proven ways to prevent drowning injuries and deaths. <laughs> Babuli tapi aku mau bawa mata untuk kira uai merbuli tanggo ni nado nango nane ada apa kata lakai rasa kira nada merda kap, mai pernah nado song menanda songo tira tiko, iya sange bakai babuli tanggo bulan ni saya ada orang gol menjualnya. Children younger than 10 years old top the drowning list in Fiji. Statistics released by the police in 2012 showed a total of 24 children falling victims to drowning. Fiji is no different to most other countries in that uh, close to 80% of drownings are males, 20% females. And it seems to be because males put themselves in harm's way a lot more, they're risk takers. And this ranges, the whole pantheon, it ranges from being drunk and jumping in with your jeans on to some kid is drowning and without even thinking about the risks or, or you know, hey, let's do this thing properly, just jumping in and then the male drowns as well. Males under 10 years of age and above 45 years of age top the drowning list in Fiji. Drowning is however a national crisis and a concern for all races and age groups. The other interesting statistic is, is that uh, 
Fijians are drowning more often than Indo Fijians. Mm -hmm. Itake, I'm sorry, I have to use the correct mm -hmm. term these days. Sure. And uh, and that's an odd one. And I guess I guess it comes to assessment of risk again. Eh? Yeah. Maybe Indo Fijians are saying, hey, I can't really swim and I'm not going in that boat because it doesn't look safe to me and there are no life jackets in it. Mm -hmm. Maybe. And the other statistic is of note is more drownings occur in the west than in the east and yet the east has i don't know 60 70 percent of the population of fiji so perhaps in the east in the west again they're putting themselves in harm's way yeah, yeah. because the kids don't have village six to go to or roaming around the city of suva so they go and play in the creeks and all the rest of this in 2012 the highest number of drowning was recorded in the western division with 36 cases 15 cases in the eastern division 10 in the north nine in the southern and two in the central division. 54% of drowning occurred in rivers around Fiji in 2012. Eight different cases were recorded from drowning in buckets, wells, baths and at sea. Lives were lost during the flooding in March 2012 with the Western Division accounting for 52% of all drowning cases. Ba recorded the highest with 31%. <laughs> Nation's business speaks to a young man who is still trying to come to terms with the loss of his only brother through drowning. Yeah, that day I remember when my brother died. Because that day we whole family staying home Sunday, big rain day that day. And after that one policeman came here. Eh? We saw okay. Eh? Me and my wife crying. Then we went to the hospital. Learning to swim and ensuring water safety across all sectors of our communities has to become a national effort. It is time Fiji citizens learn how to swim and learn water safety from an early age. Authorities are concerned about the increasing drowning trend and the police believe drowning can be avoided if police heed warnings and take precautions. Water safety stakeholders are vowing to step up their efforts. Drowning happens fast and people have just a couple of seconds to think or react to save a life. Anticipating such dangers, having basic water safety and cardiopulmonary resuscitation skills or CPR is critical for preventing death. I think parental supervision is essential because it only takes 30 seconds for a child to drown. So you could just walk inside to get a cup of coffee and it's too late. So I, you really have to stay with your children in the water. If you don't have like company or your parents around and, and you, if you start drowning then there will be nobody there to help you. And it's important to have them around because like if you have any pro health problems they'll be there to help you swim and learn how to swim. The need and urgency to introduce swimming and water safety lessons as a mandatory subject for all primary school aged children in Fiji is necessary to ensure that our children grow up knowing how to swim and most importantly how to save a life. Oh absolutely, absolutely. This will take some time and uh, you know the Ministry of Education is a big ministry and there's a labyrinth of bureaucracy to navigate through. To get, you have to work a year in advance to get it in the curriculum, the teachers have to approve it. Then FNU might need to have more some training available. Ideally our vision is for every school teacher in Fiji to have some level of proficiency in not only swimming but teaching swimming and certainly it would be fantastic to make at some point in a school kids life 
swimming is mandatory. We spoke to the Ministry of Education about their plans to introduce swimming lessons in the school curriculum. Swimming is something that has to be done jointly by the community, by the parents and by the education system. One of the biggest uh, drawback of schools is that we don't have swimming pools in the schools. We have over 1,000 schools in Fiji, but uh, we have uh, swimming pools maybe only in less than half a dozen of them. <coughs> so it becomes the responsibility of parents together with the community where we can uh, organize things to be done. We have swimming pools uh, in the city councils or town councils or other clubs that run it. Uh, and uh, it has to be planned properly. It has to be supervised well and, uh, and uh, everyone has to play their role to make sure that uh, swimming goes on. Uh, as I have said earlier that uh, we are surrounded by sea, we have got a lot of rivers, we have got lakes, but uh, there is a lot of uh, uh, risk there as well. So we need uh, people to be very careful of what is there, the currents, the depth, the, the bottom surface, uh, and uh, the right people to supervise. So as I said, I think it's everyone's responsibility, and this responsibility has to be awakened. We have to rise because uh, the number of cases of death uh, by drowning is increasing. Most schools have hired swimming instructors and coaches to train students on water safety and swimming. The Learning Centre, a primary school in Suva, take their students to a local pool to teach them safety training and encourage swimming. I really appreciate what uh, some of the schools are doing that have already got uh, enrolled into swimming classes that are taking children uh, to the swimming pools or wherever. Uh, I will also thank the parents that have given consent and that have accompanied those uh, children out there. It's a great thing they are doing and I encourage more people to be part of that mm -hmm. because uh, we have seen the large number of uh, lives of young children lost through drowning. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, important uh, for parents, for the members of the community, for schools to take part mm -hmm. and uh, get into this exercise. But I just want to say, under very good supervision, please. Whilst government, the police and water safety stakeholders are doing all they can to decrease the number of drowning cases, the initiative must come from you and I. If we work together as a society, we can save lives and lessen the number of drowning cases annually. I must say swimming is uh, very, very important. It is a life skill, as we all know. And it is so important for our children to know that eh, life skill because uh, we are surrounded by water. And uh, this is something that uh, for me as a swimmer, as an ex-swimmer, well, still a current swimmer, uh, when you are listening to news, you, see a lot, you hear a lot about drownings. And, uh, you know, for me as a swimmer, hearing that it's, it's, it's very sad because uh, it's, it's actually something that I would like to focus on to take part in. This school program, which is very good, it's another way of us giving back to swimming and teaching the life skill, the safety, and uh, children who are also, we can find potential, that like to go on to competition level. Children who cannot swim are eight times more likely to be at risk of drowning. Teaching children to swim is a necessary life skill that all parents must act upon now. I like swimming because it's uh, fun and it, uh, it keeps us uh, healthy and fit and it also can save, uh, save our friends or ourselves. If there's a tsunami, uh, you might know how, how, if you don't know how to swim, you might drown and die. It's important to learn how to swim because if you, there's a lot of water around Fiji, especially because we live on an island. And so we need to know how to swim, otherwise if we want to go and swim, we'll just drown because we have no idea how to stay afloat. Thank you.